I mean, we're in the infancy stage of the um, So our curriculum is kind of growing with our information. And we recently had um, Mickey Ostriker, who is the attorney for the National Press Photographers Association. He's based in New York. He was in town for the panel that the ACLU put on. And we had him come and meet with the Public Affairs Subcommittee and to talk about the issues of uh, we're putting together curriculum for training the officers with the Legal Subcommittee on what are the rights of the media. How do we have, you know, our goals are going to have a class between media and law enforcement. And so we had um, the NPPA attorney come and do a presentation and show us some legal cases where um, the media and law enforcement clash and ended up in the headlines and ended up in the courtroom. And so we will use material from him and also um, Thomas and Cicero has helped us with um, some material as well. And we will be bringing that that information to the legal subcommittee and then to the mobile field force trainers to make sure that those boots on the ground, the officers who are out there dealing with the demonstrators, have been schooled in this arena. It's very important to us that our officers are armed with that information and are dialed into it. So that's the more of all your officers get that kind of training? All the officers who are, who are dealing with uh, the protesters, the mobile field force unit, yes. Both the commanders will have training and the officers will have training. Debbie, is the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office doing a similar thing? Mm -hmm. oh, all yes. Yes. We're all together. We're one big happy family. <laughs> I'm wondering, um, since you're all one big happy family, have you guys hired um, your own staff for photography to document this event for future events? And will we have access to any of that B-roll or media if there is such a thing? I mean, I know we'll be shooting, but I just didn't know if you guys were shooting from your perspective for your own lessons. Would you guys be interested in that? Yes. Yeah. I think your insider, you're going to be able to, your officers or your staff will be places where we won't go, and that might be a interesting perspective to tell and show the citizens of Tampa Bay what you guys are working hard on that week, and that would be a good way for us to get that out there, if that's something you guys are already planning on. Wondering what kind of input you're getting from communities that had the convention previous, and the good and the bad that you're getting fed back and as far as law enforcement from your side dealing with the media and what red flags they've advised you about, what things work, what things didn't work. Yes. Obviously we've been talking extensively with them. We've done a great deal of research or in constant contact with uh, the IA and the Chief Monroe from Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. And we have the individuals from um, Minneapolis St. Paul that were tasked with that convention down and we've spoken to them at length on everything from A to Z. You know, what worked, what didn't work, what would you do differently, uh, what your expectations were to, to what actually occurred. And we have learned a great deal from them. Well, with all the questions we peppered you with, is there anything that steps out that we haven't brought up or something that we ought to bring up right now to discuss further that we haven't touched base on yet? Or? No, I don't know that they that any of the other locations that, that we've spoken to, you know, uh, Boston, New York, uh, Denver, um, Minneapolis, St. Paul, that one, I don't know if everyone in this room is, I've been all over the, the nation. And I'm sure Colonel Duncan will uh, agree with me on this because both of us have been out and he's been in over 30 years, and I've been in 28. That it, you, it is rare to find another uh, area where law enforcement works so well together. And, and that's one of the, the breakdowns that we have seen in other locations is that they didn't have the working relationships or the communication that allowed them to, to put on a, a seamless event. And uh, I think that we'll, we'll do a very, very good job with this. I, there's nothing today that has been brought up that is a, a surprise. You know, it may have been from an angle that we hadn't necessarily considered, but we've had 
probably hours of discussion on the credentialing, on uh, locations of access, on you know, the, the, the uh, uh, crowd access, and what if the media gets involved with those individuals who were placed under arrest. So we have gone through those scenarios and those um, what ifs over and over and over again. I know. It's helpful to, to develop these plans with all of your input so that we're sure we, we are covering all the bases. I'm just curious at what point is the uh, Secret Service been involved? Secret Service has been involved all, all along. It's the, the, the difference, we're all of us, we are uh, planning this event as a group with the Secret Service being the head. The difference is, is that they are tasked with securing the actual footprint of the event, and we're tasked with securing the exterior of it. So, but we're we're in constant contact, and, and we're all working as one to plan this event. Sorry, lots of questions. <laughs> um, trolley, cart line. I mean, are those services going to be discontinued in the downtown area? And I'm so sorry if I missed something from the Coast Guard. What about all the waterways and the Garrison Channel? And mm -hmm. are those things that will be patrolled <coughs> or want ride along? Um, what kind of underwater cameras are going to be available? I'll, I mean, I just there's tons of great stories to do out there, and I just uh, I don't want to not bring it up and forget about it. I think that's the intent of the subcommittee as well, is to like we have done with previous events, the Super Bowls where the subcommittee provides all of those pre-event stories yeah. for everyone. And, and I know we've had a couple of those with the bicycle train and, and, and uh, we've had the uh, uh, EOD team and the uh, mounted unit. And we'll continue to provide those leading up too. And the Coast Guard is a very integral part of all of the planning. And I know that they intend to uh, provide the media with information on what uh, their planning entails and, and exactly what they're tasked with in securing the waterways around the convention. For the uh, Sunday night event, do you guys perceive that you would need to be in place Saturday for that coverage, or are you looking at Sunday only? I thought we'd be out there Saturday, too. I think we could have her in there Saturday. Just, just run tests and stuff like that, too. The problem with Saturday is there's a baseball game from 1 to 4. So the, the, the whole footprint will have to be cleared after the game before any access is allowed. So, I mean, we're expecting people to come in on Saturday, but we're just not quite sure what time yet. And you guys don't have a logistical challenge from there, you know, from covering the games of where you can go live from and where it's set up. Is that, will you use that the same area though, or do you know yet? Um, I'm not sure what the footprint's going to be yet. Um, it could be a different location. And um, so uh, there's still a lot of conversation about that, but we'll, we'll know several weeks in advance, or at least on there yet, what we're going to be. It would be way different than a baseball game. We're thinking about what you guys with, with the protesters. That's what we're <laughs>